and the Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Adamu, has ordered the withdrawal of all police officers attached to all VIPs across the nation with immediate effect. However, Adamu said those attached to government houses, the Senate President and the Speaker of the House of Representatives should not be withdrawn. This was contained in a police wireless message on Wednesday as addressed to all state commissioners of police. According to the wireless message dated October 21st, 2020, it said, any commander who violates this order would bear the consequences. It was further directed at all withdrawn protect personnel at a report to come poll commands. Joining us now is Osagie Dixon, a security expert, to talk about some of the developments from the protest. Uh, thank you very much for joining us. Let's start with the withdrawal of uh, police uh, details from VIPs. Why do you think that decision is coming, is coming now? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Felicity, for Felicity for having me. <clears throat> I think uh, the decision is a good one, and uh, the reason why it's coming now, I don't know. Uh, previous uh, predecessor of this uh, present IGP has uh, really uh, uh, set such kind of a memo and uh, commands to all uh, states and uh, various uh, mobile units and uh, protection units to withdraw their personnel from uh, VIPs. And uh, after one or two months, such kind of command will later be neglected. So I have seen this very one to be neglected in the nearest future. Uh, but the reason why they are giving this uh, uh, order now, I think... Uh, 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 was because uh, maybe perhaps they just want everybody to feel the impact of the NSAT protest. Uh, because, however, I had not uh, really uh, expected that uh, a given state like Nigeria would protect the allies and uh, leave the vulnerable uh, uh, to, to face their threat. Uh, giving protection services is for everyone because Nigeria belongs to everybody and we all deserve protection. So the IGP uh, decision to call uh, up all the essential uh, VIPs, I don't know the reason behind that. But uh, for me, I, I think uh, it, it's not, it's not, it's not uh, in, in a good stand. It's not coming at the right time. Uh, sh they should have done that uh, some while ago, not in this time where the threat level is very, very high. So uh, I wish the VIP good luck so that they will be able to understand and uh, enjoy the security applications we all Nigerians are also enjoying. So VIP protections should permanently be uh, eradicated because the protections are made for every Nigerian, not for specific people. All right. Does this also, or is this also possible that the police um, is trying to gather as many um, available hands as possible at a time of a crisis across the nation? Um, how much more, you know, must be done to ensure that the, the cities are safe? Uh, because, of course, if you look across Nigeria today, mostly around Lagos, you know, you would see there's a lot of carnage going on um, across the street. So is this also possible, possibly one of the reasons why it is being done? Can you hear uh, us, Mr. Uh, Dixon, Mr. did you get the question? Mr. Dixon, can you hear us? Okay, these things happen to. with technology. Yeah. Um, let's just talk a bit and see um, if we can reconnect. Mm -hmm. um, I will be hopefully taking him on other issues. Um, um, the comments being made from across the country and beyond. Um, I watched a video of... Um, uh, Noah Trevor. Um, Trevor Noah. Trevor Noah, yes. Yeah, so one of my favorite persons. And um, even though he tried to make um, a, a joke out of it, you could see that he was also trying to pass on a message. And uh, Noble Laureate says he's proud of what the youths, um, the, the fact that they have uh, uh, they've woken up from their slumber to, you know, uh, take their rightful place yeah. uh, in the country. Then again, one worries, um, even though there is commendation, yes, you've, you've uh, come up to uh, speak up for yourself. What about the over 40 lives, according to um, Amnesty International, that has passed on? Um, a, hopefully... Yeah, go on. I, I was going to say, it's a, it's a reminder that um, in, in Nigeria, um, unfortunately, over the years, lives have become statistics. Um, I would expect that the government should be aware of every single person who has lost their lives in the last you know, few weeks 
uh, to the NSA's uh, protests. At least we should have names. We should have um, something that we can remember them with, not just numbers. It shouldn't be 12 people. It shouldn't be 15 people. It shouldn't be 40 people. The government should at least have some level of connection to these people. The uh, state government yet should be able to say this name and that name and this name. But right now we, we're working with figures. Same way we're working with figures in Zamfara. Same way we're working with figures in South and Kaduna. Well, let, let, and let's, 22 people died. Who are these 22 people? Indeed. Uh, let's see um, if we have uh, Mr. Sergey Dixon. Dixon. Uh, Welcome back. back. Can you hear us, sir? I can hear you a lot, okay. Brilliant. I was asking if you feel this might also be, um, this order might be given because the police, as it stands, needs to have many more hands um, on deck, of course, to tackle the security situation in the country as it stands. Um, there's a lot of chaos going on across the streets of Lagos and, of course, every other part of the country. Um, so do you think that might be one of the reasons the IG of police is given this order? Seem to have lost him again. Okay, if you can hear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got your question, but Go not ahead, to the end, but let me just uh, take your question from the one I got. Uh, for me, I, I really do not believe uh, maybe it's because of the strength uh, they are withdrawing this uh, uh, spe uh, special uh, VIP protection. Uh, I think that maybe uh, they just want to boost it up or perhaps uh, just want everyone to uh, feel the pain, you know, because uh, some VIP might be somewhere instigating violence while they are enjoying police protection. So it could be psychological because uh, the Nigerian police are perhaps have assessed the uh, situations and they've also assessed uh, the reason why this protest are taking long, who are the guys behind it. And if perhaps there are some VIPs behind it, then you don't deserve uh, uh, special protection. If you, you have to also face the threat. That's my own perception from my own reasoning because uh, we have a lot of threats faced with this country. Uh, we have the banditry threat from the Northwest. We have the uh, terrorist threat from the Northeast. And then we also have a lot of threat from the east, west, south, and north. They have not withdrawn this uh, special forces. Why now? So, uh, well, uh, it's their decision, and uh, the IG knows best. Uh, maybe today or in the nearest time, they will uh, show the British Nigerians uh, the reason why they took such kind of decision in this time where the threat level is very high. Uh, my concern is the recycling of methods approach to handling issue. This is not the first time uh, such an um, instruction has been given and we know for a fact that um, it's not always complied with. What worries you about this continued recycling of methods that hasn't worked and we still continue to use it. Isn't it a time we begin to think outside the box? Yeah, it is a time we need to create another box and think within it. Uh, because uh, this method is not really working. I will align that with command negligence and uh, lack of respect to uh, superiority and orders. And also lack of respect to the SOP of the Nigerian police force. Because uh, I see no reason why a, a, an IGP, the first policeman in this great nation, Nigeria, uh, will issue an order and uh, thereafter uh, the order will be practically uh, or practically uh, being withdrawn. Uh, the reason why the orders are being withdrawn or respected, I don't know why. Uh, perhaps maybe some uh, senior police officers who are benefiting from this uh, VIP protections uh, really do not want that, uh, uh, that service to die, you know. So they might perhaps find their way to Abuja or uh, meet with uh, their appropriate colleagues. And before you know it, systematically, gradually, uh, they will have to go back and uh, disobey that order without the knowledge or full-blown knowledge of the IGP. But sometimes I believe that the IGP sometimes is being persuaded, like the previous IGP that banded uh, VIP protection. I later understood that it was being persuaded, persuaded by the... ...and more people were crying at the National Assembly that uh, their lives is, uh, is in danger. And that is the reason why I think uh, they relax such kind of order. But this order that came must stand forever so that the private security uh, industry will be given uh, the ability and capability to uh, give the VIP such kind of protection. Because in foreign land, you can never see a policeman giving uh, VIP protections to VIPs except to government officials. But here we have abused uh, our policing system. And that is why uh, the threat level is very high because uh, those ones guarding the VIP, they really, really uh, give them protections and the VIP can mess up any given time. All right. I'll also speak uh, quickly on... Um, because you just mentioned what happens, you know, outside Nigeria. You don't get to see um, movie stars and VIPs, in quote, moving around with armed policemen. Um, so, so how do you think, you know, we can fix, you know, a situation where 
um, a local government chairman doesn't feel safe moving around the people that supposedly voted him into power. Um, a VIP doesn't feel safe moving around the people that celebrate him um, and instead needs security uh, presence and policemen who should, of course, be uh, responsible to the citizens and not to one person. Um, what does this really say about the people who we have in power, the people that we have holding certain positions and their relationship with the citizens? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I was, uh, some, some 10 years ago, I, I was in the United Kingdom and I found, my, I found myself in a particular city. Hello, Mr. Osak. Uh, Mr. Dixon, can you hear us? The Prime Minister. I think Mr. My, Dixon. My, my voice ruins the connection. Uh, that I has it. nothing to do with it. Um, let's see uh, what happens. Uh, when he does uh, have a point that it should be um, eradicated forever, the yes, idea of, of having uh, uh, police officers attached to VIP. But this is Nigeria. Um, look at young people speaking up and being clamped down so brutally, uh, to use that word, I, I am not that optimistic. I want to be. I want to be. And once we see the leadership that goes with these comments, then maybe uh, hope will be reenkindled. Mr. Dixon, um, I, I understand we have you again. Could you uh, finish yeah. your thoughts, please? Yeah, yeah. So what I'm trying to say is that I said uh, when, I, when, I, when I, about some 10 years ago or so, when I was in the United Kingdom on holiday, I saw the uh, PM uh, moving around with bicycles. Uh, but here in our own uh, country, uh, a local government councillor will want to move around with police uh, protection, will want to move around with escort services because he felt that his life is not safe. Now, this is the uh, analysis here. Uh, before you are voted into power, the people expected uh, much from you while going into power. Uh, the Nigerian state expected more from you. Uh, but we discovered that uh, uh, we are not practicing democracy. We are practicing uh, kleptocracy. Uh, we have a lot of kleptocrats. Majority of our leaders are kleptocrats. I'm not sorry to use that word, kleptocrat, because the signs are there, the evidence are there. When they get into office, you see them building mansions, you see them riding the best cars, you see them living in the uh, most uh, lovely environment. Why? And they, they, that is for public funds, you know? So when you uh, uh, tamper with public funds internally from your own conscience, you will not feel secure. Why are you uh, not feeling secure? Because you have abused the social contract uh, between you and the state. And that is why our leaders must learn to uh, play by the rule, you know. They are our servants. They are sent there to go and protect us. They are sent there to go and deliberate from us. But it's so regrettable, uh, Felicity, that these guys, when they get into power, they start enriching themselves, enriching their family and loved ones, and leave our state vulnerable. The social contract has been breached. And that is why the state of insecurity uh, has been uh, uh, rising to the, uh, to the highest level, uh, because Nigerians felt that these guys in power don't care about us. And if you don't care about us, then we are not going to respect the social contract. And that's why the crime rate is very, very high. So for me, I will advise our leaders to see this South protest as a medium in which they are going to go back to the drawing board and remember that Nigeria is a nation. This is a great nation that would have been better than many countries in the world. We have about 40 mineral resources. We have OES. We have uh, different kind of uh, money-making uh, uh, machines in Nigeria. But some individuals just feel that when they are in power, they are going to reach themselves. And that is why they always back up for police protection. Because I see no reason why you need police protection, because uh, if your hands are clean, you should just go around. But finally, Felicity, on this very note, I will also expect the Nigerian state, not even the Senate or the uh, Asma Assembly, I will expect the Nigerian people to push for the cut of our uh, political salary. The salary is a criminal act. All right. I, I want to, from, just from what you said about the breach of social contracts, the Amnesty International have come out to say, uh, let me see if I can find um, um, the comment here. They've accused the army um, of having an intention to kill without consequences because some of those killed and injured at both grounds, um, Lekki and the other area, um, were allegedly taking away by the military. Uh, this is a strong accusation coming from Amnesty International. And we know that before now, the government usually comes back and say, we should discountenance uh, reports from Amnesty International. In this case, do you believe that Amnesty International was overstretching? And what is the consequences of people with the intention to kill without consequences? 
Oh, well, for me, I'm a, a senior member of Amnesty International, and uh, I think that I'm not going to speak for Amnesty International, but uh, every allegation that Am Amnesty International has laid against the Nigerian government uh, is prone to investigation. Uh, but this is my own position, uh, Felicity. Uh, it's, uh, I, you could see from my face, I don't know, I'm really stressed out for the past two days. Uh, I, I lost my sleep, I lost my, my I, I'm not in a good mood because uh, uh, these are Nigerians, these are our people, these are beautiful citizens. I was in Lekki to get about two, three occasions to monitor the event. I was in Alausa to also monitor the event so that I could be able to give a first-hand uh, 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 witness uh, to local and international TV stations on the happenings in Nigeria. Uh, we have different formation of crowd, uh, Felicity. Uh, we have the host side crowd, we have the expressive crowd, we have the spectative crowd, escape crowd, and acquisitive crowd, you know. Uh, but the kind of crowd formation that we gathered in Lekki to get were expressive crowd. And uh, they came out to express themselves. And the only offense they committed uh, was to uh, beg and plead with the federal government uh, to uh, keep up the standard of social contracts. They begged the federal government to ensure that they, are, they should do uh, the right thing at the right time. And the only weapons in their hands that met their death was uh, the national flag. Uh, uh, Felicity, I am heartbroken because uh, one of the most beautiful music in my life is the national anthem. Each time I heard the national anthem, I am moved with pain, joy, with joy and, uh, and uh, enthusiasm that Nigerian is my fatherland because that is what we are told right from time. Uh, but uh, the weapons that this uh, uh, Nigerian youth we are holding was uh, the national flags. And uh, they were met with such kind of a uh, gruesome murder. Uh, for me, uh, if the Nigerian government did not find the end of this fear uh, 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 devil activities, because this is totally uh, an animal behavior. Yeah, this is an animal behavior. Uh, because uh, I saw uh, most streets, I saw a lot of evidence. Uh, for me, I will stand anywhere in the world and tell the state, because this is my country, we must all speak truth to power. We have a lot of army officers, we have a lot of naval, naval officers, we have a lot of uh, air force officers, we have a lot of police officers. If they all keep quiet in this incident that went wrong at Stoke Gates, then they are all accomplished. Because it is constitutional that uh, when someone commits crime and you are aware of it and you keep quiet, you are an accomplice. So everybody that keeps silence in this dear devil act is an accomplice. Uh, because uh, our youth does not even deserve to die. Is that what uh, they deserve from our government? Felicity, when I was in the uh, 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 Lekki Togit, I saw a nation, a nation in that protest. When I say I saw a nation, I saw a giving nation, a nation that takes care of its people, a nation that provides uh, 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 free meals, a nation that provides free education, a nation that provides uh, a free medical... Uh, Mr. Dixon, uh, uh, let, Mr. Dixon, um, I'm sorry to interject, but I need you to speak on the allegation that bodies were taken away by the military. Because I saw people making comments on social media asking, where are the bodies of those that are said to have been killed? Some people are beginning to use that to say people were not killed. So I want you to speak on the fact that this is not the first time the military has been accused of such a behavior. But what is your unique perspective on it? Uh, my unique perspective on this, uh, without, uh, because I'm on national television, uh, and uh, my covenant with God is that I should not lie. Uh, I will never lie when I'm on air. Uh, this action was a state action. I think uh, the, the, the army should come out with clear evidence that they are not the ones that carry this action. I saw the advance they took when they were coming. Uh, that systematic movement, um, uh, Felicity, is what we call uh, fire and movement. Those steps were military steps. Those uh, firing uh, power was military firing power. The tactics adopted was army tactics. So, uh, and there's no how we're not going to record uh, casualty. Even if, perhaps, let's assume, they did not even shoot at the protesters. The conjecture alone, with that gunshot and fighting uh, and, and fright from the gunshot, will kill a lot of people. I know, and I am sure very well, that a lot of guys died in that action, and they would definitely go to clean up their mess. And that was why we have the light switch off, we have the uh, cameras taken off. The state government of Lagos State must be held accountable for such action. We can't let this go. Because let, let, what if it's my brother? What if it's your brother? What if it's your sister? I was met with that action. Are you going to keep quiet? I will not keep quiet. I'm going to say whatever I know about that, and I'm going to also uh, ensure that everybody that, uh, uh, that, that participated in this action should be brought to book. So I All believe right. Amnesty International. They have no reason to lie. I yeah. believe Amnesty International. Mr. Dixon, I, I want to, you just mentioned um, the idea of being held accountable. Um, does this feel like, you know, 
uh, it's going to be a different situation from what we've experienced in the past. In, in 2015, if you remember, there was a bombing in Iran by, you know, the Nigerian Air Force. You know, to date, we still haven't seen anyone take uh, responsibility or be held accountable. The same thing happened with the Shiites uh, a few years ago, 347 according to official figures. Um, still nobody has been held accountable. Does this feel like it might be different and people would be made to answer the questions for what happened um, uh, two nights ago? Um, or you okay. know, will it be swept under the rug as, you know, as usual? I want to assure you, I want to assure you, uh, it's good, uh, people, some people are going to be held accountable. Yes, the government will want to protect its people. Uh, the state will want to protect their, uh, their own evidence. And that was why they took off the camera. That camera alone they took off from that place was a premeditated attack on our youth. It was a premeditated assault on our youth. It was a premeditated murder of our youth. So uh, they will be held accountable because uh, uh, most times when incidents like this happens in Nigeria, they sweep it under the carpet. And this is why we have the lawmakers of the National Assembly that are supposed to stand for, for this great nation. But they will all keep quiet after one or two sittings or plenary of investigation. But for me, I think uh, they are going to lodge a global investigation and uh, the uh, international community should send in private investigators to come and uh, investigate this incident. Uh, it must not be left uh, in the hands of the government because they want to leave the investigation uh, to the Nigerian state or to the Nigerian public. Uh, the investigation will be tampered and a lot of things will go wrong. Uh, I would advise that uh, the United Nations should send in their investigation team with immediate effect to come on site one hand. Uh, there, were, there were blood sighted on ground that very night. A lot of blood was sighted on ground. Uh, I had asked a friend of mine to also uh, give me a break. A friend of mine also was on ground yesterday, and he told me they saw a lot of blood. And those blood were not animal blood, because the last time I checked, I didn't see any animal protesting uh, on MSAT. Only human beings were there. So those blood were human blood. So uh, the Nigerian uh, government should be held accountable. Uh, the army must be held accountable. And uh, I want to advise the Nigerian army. Uh, what makes you a great nation is when you take accountability to your own uh, uh, error and to your own uh, uh, activities. Uh, when the United States of America took off uh, the Iranian commander, they came on air and said, we're taking off this commander. It was a threat to us. Why don't you guys accept uh, this action of yours? This is terrible and it's a disgrace uh, to the state of the army. I'm, I'm so ashamed of the Nigerian army. I'm totally ashamed. I'm totally Sorry, ashamed. Jason. Uh, all right. Um, I, I'm, I was going to take your thoughts quickly uh, before we wrap up this segment of the conversation. Um, Senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano, is saying that um, he is he and his team they are compiling evidence to take the chief of army staff, uh, Lieutenant uh, General uh, Tukubara Tai, uh, before the International Criminal Court. Um, again, it speaks to the conversation, uh, the question my colleague just asked um, about. Um, you know, an end at the end of the day. We hear of all this fantastic investigation. This time we're going to the ICC. Of what impact, really, would taking him to that court have in, I mean, on, on the situation we have on the ground here? Okay, uh, Felicity, a, a state murder cannot be, uh, uh, you know, uh, given justice by the state uh, because uh, the state, uh, the state uh, is in charge of the judicial system. So for me, uh, Femi Palona has been a great fighter for humanity. He has been a great fighter for Nigeria. Uh, his action is uh, uh, measurable, justifiable, and uh, I'm in full support of him. Uh, the team of army staff uh, needs to answer query. Uh, he needs to respond at the International Court of Justice to tell Nigerians uh, who were those guys that carry out such kind of action. So uh, Felicity, what I think right now should be done is a collision of evidence. And uh, before the collision of evidence, they must be uh, sure that uh, uh, they follow the investigation process. You know, the, the investigation process has to be thorough. Uh, it has to be very timely. You know, they must put in time. They don't need to stretch it because sometimes uh, the problem we have in our plan is that we put a uh, low time on investigation. So I, I am support with uh, Femi Palano, the advocate of Nigeria. I respect him a lot. He's a great man in a great Nigeria. So he must fight for these people. Uh, let's assume that the guys that died, they're his children. They're my brothers, they're your brothers, they're your sister. It's a very black cheese for, for, for this great nation. It's even a shame. It's a shame. And, uh, uh, the, for example, the army denies that. Then that means uh, the Lagos state came under invasion without response from security agencies because the security agencies are supposed to protect the state from external uh, invasion. So if the army denies they're not the one, that means there was a strange army that flew into this country to carry out this uh, invasion of our youth and there was no appropriate response. That is also a negligence uh, from our security agencies. All right. Osage Dixon, thank you so much for joining us and for sharing your thoughts with us. Thank you very much. Osage is the name, O-S-A-J-I-E.
Osage, okay. Osage. <laughs> Thanks Thank once again. Thank you. God sent. Thank you. All right. Pretty interesting. Um, you know, and I, I felt it was really important that we bring up, you know, that part of the conversation. Um, how likely is it that this time it would be different? You know, does the body language of the government show that someone will be held responsible? In what way do we have any trust? I will just tell you that now that the body language does not show that responsibility will be taken because um, a lot of persons have said that the president needs to speak to the people. And that body language, we're still waiting. He is the father, to use the words of most people, he's the father of this nation. And when your house is um, on, um, on the fire, I mean, you have to show some level of responsibility. The highest uh, comment we've had was from the vice president. And it was uh, almost 24 hours after the incident. Uh, issued a statement that was late last to, night. Yes, he issued a statement Twitter. to, at least that is something. That is the kind of owning up, standing up, saying that we take responsibility for what is happening. How can people in diaspora, people who are seen from the outside, I don't even know the magnitude of the situation on the ground, reacting, responding, and the person who is at the helm of affairs, who should be the one championing uh, the course of uh, ensuring we get peace, is silent. I, I, don't, I personally don't. I think that we have gotten to a stage where we accept the most mediocre um, moves and celebrate them. I personally don't see this, you know, a Twitter, you know, thread by the vice president to me much. I personally, um, mostly because um, I don't, I don't know what is there to celebrate. I don't know why it's important, you know, that we even. It's not a celebration. It's an acknowledgement. There I, is something I, I don't about. See, I don't see much value to it, and, I mean, and this is why. They... Because even if you read the statement, mm -hmm. there's a part that I, I believe he said, you know, he hopes that this doesn't repeat itself. And for me, that that's not it. It should be we're putting our um, feet on the ground. We will investigate. Somebody will be persecuted. These lies would, would be, you know, shown Sorry, justice. I hear you. That's where that's where I look for. I hear you. And I'm not and even I agree. looking forward to the the, the president's statement anymore. Or for the president. I keep hearing these talk of, oh, the president must address the country. The, House, the National Assembly was saying it. I keep seeing, you know, statements like that. Oh, where's the president? Why isn't he speaking? And a lot of people would also say that his silence is a statement. The fact that, you know, this has gone on for two weeks and he hasn't said anything, that's a statement. Um, uh, then again, um, I, I see your point. I hear you. I get what you are saying. Then again, we operate a democracy. In a democracy, there is a president, and that president is the chief security officer of the nation. And when you have a scenario that we have right now, and that chief security officer is silent, it is worrisome. That is the a people, statement. the international. It is not statement enough. It is not something you're talking about mediocre. We shouldn't accept such behavior as that is his style. When international organization, people who have seen what is going on from the outside are calling on the president and he remains silent, then we should be worried. We should be worried because if we do not, it's a different scenario if we do not have a president, but we have a president. And for that reason, if nothing else, he owes Nigerians the responsibility to say, I see what is going, not speaking through a third party, not speaking through an aide, not even speaking through the vice president. As the chief security officer, he must speak to people. And that is a request. It's not a request. Championed by everyone. <laughs>